Today, we're going to talk about why I think one of the largest and growing uh, big names in this cryptocurrency space and representatives of this cryptocurrency space is a fake. Today, this video is my invitation to you to take the red pill of anyone who's claiming to be the savior of cryptocurrencies. That is one heck of an oxymoron, and I'm gonna go into it, and you're gonna understand why by the end of this video, if you guys are interested. And if you guys have been watching these videos and you haven't done so yet, I encourage you and I appreciate it if you hit the like button and if you hit subscribe because we're putting out videos every single day, keeping you guys up to date on what's happening in this cryptocurrency space and you know our opinions of what's going on. If you guys want even more information, go ahead and check out a link for the CT Club that is available down below in the video description. And there you can get access to our personal crypto portfolio, the trades that we're doing, our uh, insights on what is happening with the market, basically everything that we're doing with our cryptocurrencies and what we're paying to, uh, paying attention to in this cryptocurrency space and a much more uh, intimate level. So today's video, we're talking about Sam Bankman Fried, the CEO of a growing popular exchange, FTX. And especially as of late, he is showing his true colors to those who are really paying attention to his intentions of what he wants to do with cryptocurrencies and how he is, whether we like it or not, uh, shaping the impression of cryptocurrencies to his users and those people who are paying attention to what he's doing uh, in this space. Sam Bankman-Fried is known for being this altruistic, uh, morally, morally strong and rich person who is just trying to get as rich as he can so that he can give it away to others, but not yet. Because as of late, in, although he is the youngest billionaire to ever exist, he has, I think, given away to charities or, you know, charitable efforts, charitable donations, about like 0.1% of his net worth, the equivalent of, you know, what a normal college kid would put like $15 towards a charity. So not quite there yet. He's got to make a little bit more money first. And that's what we're talking about in this video, his efforts for making more money. That is his his tried and true, his number one goal. And we're gonna see that similarity and, and all the things that he's willing to sacrifice to achieve that goal. So it's not like Sam Bankman Fried came from nothing. He started off right out of college with a six figure income at a financial firm trading ETFs. So right off the bat, he was already making pretty good money. And then it wasn't until 2018 where he decided to start dabbling in the cryptocurrency space, not hodling, not investing uh, mentally in the fundamentals of why cryptocurrencies were, in, were invented in the first place, which Sam, if you're watching this and you wanna learn why cryptocurrencies exist, why Satoshi Nakamoto even tried to create something that was as innovative as Bitcoin, I invite you to, to watch this, uh, subscribe to this channel and watch all these videos because that's what I'm passionate about. Anyway, it was in 2018, he started investing in cryptocurrencies purely to make a profit and finding, you know, through trading, through an arbitrage opportunity in particular that he found between the US markets and the Japanese cryptocurrency markets, he found a healthy the 30% uh, surplus basically uh, that, that he was able to do arbitrage trading for quite some time. And that's basically how he made his billion in cryptocurrency. Within that process of him doing all these trades and trying to do it at the pretty high volume and you know high high worth uh, value of trades, he found some shortcomings in the cryptocurrency exchanges that he was using, and so that inspired him to create his own that we all know as FTX. So fast forward four years later, the year is 2022. Sam Bankman-Fried is a well-off individual in general and a, a powerhouse that some consider to be a powerhouse in this cryptocurrency industry, if we're judging by the deep pockets uh, that he has accrued. And we have the failings of a lot of centralized lending platforms and just centralized platforms in general. And this often happens during bear markets in cryptocurrencies where the weak and otherwise failing projects fail 
and we get a nice cleansing out of it. Uh, we saw the failings of Celsius, Voyager, and also the crypto investment fund, Three Arrows Capital, and you know, just general, a huge fallout between those major players going bankrupt and the trickle down effects. Sam Bankman Freed saw an opportunity, an opportunity not to let the free market cleanse itself and actually come out all the better for it, an opportunity for him to buy out these companies, to absorb them into his own uh, smorgasbord of <laughs> cryptocurrency companies uh, and an opportunity that he deemed to be a profitable investment. Fast forward, what, two, three, four months later, now Sam Bankman Freed is ready to unleash institutional investors into this cryptocurrency space. He's waited long enough to see his own cryptocurrency investments start going to the moon again. This would be, you know, his first bear market. He's impatient. And so very recently, a few days ago, in fact, Sam Bankman-Fried or SBF published his own ideas for how cryptocurrencies could be regulated. The U.S. is just dragging their feet just a little bit too much, don't you know? And he's ready again to pump his bags, regardless of how high of an air, a barrier of entry he it would create for regular people like you and me. Uh, no, he's he's in and he's ready to see his bags pumped so that again, he could make even more money so that he could one day give it away, but not yet, right? And again, what he published was actually ideas, not real solutions or, you know, uh, real logistics of how this could actually be implemented. For example, he was saying how DeFi platforms should be registered. How does a DeFi, how does a decentralized code register itself? Again, it's like the U.S. Treasury and OFAC trying to uh, sanction code. How does that work? Um, also, he thinks that all blockchains should be able to stop pretty much instantly in the case of a hack so that they can prevent hacks from happening instead of allowing these blockchains to over time become all the more secure and robust because attack vectors are expertly targeted by hackers and provide these hackers provide a very high incentive for these blockchains to be secure because the risk is that they will get hacked uh, but no he thinks there should be absolute centralized control over the function of the blockchain so that they could stop it so then a hacker can't hack it instead of, again, the attack factors being identified and remedied and moving on and being all the better for it. Again, showing a lack of interest in what the free market can actually produce, much less interest in seeing this cryptocurrency space become more decentralized and robust against anything like regulations. Again, because he is all for regulations, because he believes regulations brings in institutional investors, and that might be the case. And that might make crypto, of course, appreciate in value. But how fun is it to be uh, on the outside looking in of this new asset class because the regulations put you on that side of the fence? Not so fun, not so free. And that's not what we're all about here. Now, lucky for us, Sam Bankman Freed, himself is actually an attack vector on crypto. He is not the last, he's not the first uh, person to try to impart their own will, their own centralized entity and selfish interest in imparting their influence on the development of this cryptocurrency space. There's been a lot of people, a lot of megalomaniacs popping up in the crypto space. Uh, they all tend to fade away by the wayside and, and fade away into the uh, oblivion of crypto history uh, because it's not about the person. It's about the decentralized networks that are being built and the freedom that they grant. That is what is most important and should be held most high by the people who are learning about cryptocurrencies, investing in them and building them. If you guys are new to this channel, welcome. I think this is a good video for you to tune in on. Thank you so much for tuning in to Crypto Tips. My name is Heidi. If you haven't done so yet, I encourage you to hit the like button and hit subscribe. We're putting out videos every day, so don't miss it. Bye guys.